What's going on, my math party people? I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach, and let's go ahead and get into this problem here. I'm gonna show you how to set up the proportion problem, and on top of that, how to solve it the right way, and then clean anything up if you need to. So, if you didn't know, I do host a class every week, three times a week, and you can get all three classes and the recordings in case you can't make them as part of my program. If you wanna learn more about my program, basically, there's a link right there, there's a link in the description of this video, please take a moment, click it, and watch the video at the top. It's gonna to explain how the program works, how it helps you work around your schedule, so you can lower any test anxiety, boost your confidence, and really get prepared the right way. Without that hoping and wishing that you're gonna pass, but actually get into test day, knowing what you know, knowing what your strategies are gonna be, and then walking out of there knowing that you did your best. That's how you get the job that you want. So, go ahead. There's the link right there, or the link in the description of this video. Long story short, all the classes, all the recordings, all of my support all the way until you pass, thousands of extra practice problems, practice tests, video solutions, flashcards, drill sets, everything that you need. So if you wanna learn more about that again, here's my phone number, feel free to shoot me a text. My phone number is 567-698-8867. My students succeed more than anybody else, and I'm proud to say it. So let's go ahead, let's get started on this problem. I'm gonna show you why I should be your ASVAB coach. So. We're looking at this and we might be really tempted to start off by reading the question from the beginning to end. Don't do that. So here's what I mean. A lot of people go, it takes Emily 18 minutes to finish reading for, no. Here's the thing. When it comes to solving questions or solving problems, you first need to know what you're looking for. So it's always a wise move to just start straight with the question. That's the most important part of the problem. The question, because you need to know what you're solving for. So right here, at this rate, how long would it take Emily to finish the novel? So here's what I'm looking at right now. At this rate, what that tells me, what that tells me is that there's gonna be a ratio, a proportion here. There's something happening consistently. There's something happening consistently. So for example, if I'm driving 20 miles an hour, at that rate, how long will it take me to get you know, 200 miles away? Or in this case, we're talking about pages, pages per minute. So in that case, we're looking at a proportion here. You know, you can say it's a rate problem because it absolutely is as well, but we can look at this as a proportion because it's gonna be a little easier for us. So what are we looking for again? Right here. How long would it take? So we're looking for time to finish the novel. Sounds good, sounds good. So that's what we're looking for. We want the time to finish the novel. And you wanna know what you're looking for. So time to finish the novel. That's what we want. Now, what else do we know about the novel? That's the next question. So look, realize what I'm just doing here. I start with the question to understand what I'm looking for. Then I look at the information to see what information is related to the question. The novel and time for the novel. What information do we have there? So here. It takes Emily 18 minutes to finish reading four pages. I am absolutely gonna write that down. 18 minutes to finish four pages. So right over here, 18 minutes is directly related to four pages. I think we can all agree on that, right? 18 minutes for four pages. Now, what does it say? Oh, we have a 326 page novel. So that's the entire novel. What did it say with the question? How long would it take to finish the novel? So it, there you go, 326 pages, that's the whole novel. So we need to figure out the time to finish the 326 page novel. 326 pages. So that's what we want. There it is. We have, we're looking for the time to complete the novel, the 326 pages. We know that it takes 18 minutes to get four pages. This is a proportion. How do I know? Because we're comparing the same things in the same way. Look, the time to finish, the pages to finish. Time 18 minutes for four pages. Time to pages, time to pages. We're comparing the same things in the same way. There we go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say the time to finish, I'm just gonna say it's T. T for time. Nice and easy, right? So what I'll do is I'm gonna set up my proportion here. T over 326 equals 18 
over four. Let me go ahead and switch colors there. 18 over four, right there. Again, we're setting up the proportion to compare the same things in the same way. By comparing the same things in the same way, you guarantee a proper setup and you're good to go. And now don't make any mistake here. You can set this up a few different ways. You could have set it up flipping both. You can compare time to time and pages to pages. So many different ways. I'm gonna show you in tonight's class how to get that done. But without further ado, how do we solve this proportion? What do we do now? What we're going to do now is we are going to solve this by either cross multiplying and dividing or making sure that we can find some sort of convenience to make our lives a little easier. Here's what I mean. A lot of us are so used to, so, so used to going ahead and cross multiplying and dividing. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't do that. Simplify first before you do that so that you can deal with smaller numbers. What am I saying? Watch this. 18 and 4. Let's simplify that fraction. Because think about it. At the end of the day, would you rather multiply by 18 and 326? Or would you rather multiply by smaller numbers if you could? Smaller numbers. They're always the best. So let's simplify first. 18 divided by 4. What do they have in common? Well, you can divide 2 from both the numerator and denominator. Because again, 18 and 4, they're both even. So they're both, ah, they have to be divisible by 2. They have to be. So 18 divided by 2, that's going to be 9. 4 divided by 2, that's going to be 2. So let's go ahead and take both of those away and replace it. So 18 over 4 is the same as 9 over 2. Now here's another thing that you didn't know. Here's a little secret I'm going to show you. A little secret I'm going to show you is this. When it comes to proportions, when you have a fraction equaling a fraction, remember this. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other when it comes to equations, right? With equations, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. What does that mean for me here? I'm going to go ahead and notice that I have an even number here, an even number there. I can divide both denominators by 2. Again, do the same thing to both sides. So what I'm going to do here is say, hey, look, I can divide the denominator here by 2. I can divide this denominator by 2. I know not many people know that, but yes, that's a legitimate move. You can do that. So if I divide 2 by 2, I can go ahead and turn that into a 1. 326 divided by 2. You should know this because you can th think about it like this. 320 divided by 2. Well, 32 divided by 2 is 16. So 320 divided by 2 is 160. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 163. That's a little bit of mental math for you, but that's not the type of mental math that's super hard. You know, that's definitely something that I know you can do with the proper time. But look at what we have now. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yo, this is actually clean because now when I cross multiply and divide, well, it's T times one. So that's just going to be T. And then we have 163 times nine. Okay. That might be the only tough part, but that's actually pretty straightforward because they're smaller numbers. Imagine dealing with 326 times 18. That'd be way, way, way too long. So here we saved ourselves some time. 3 times 9 is 27. There we have that. Then 6 times 9 is going to be 54. Bring that 2 back to get 56. And then 1 times 9 is 9. Add that 5 back is 14. So we have 1,467. What does that mean? That's the number of minutes it'll take. 1,467 minutes. Now, you may be looking at this and you're saying, well, hey, coach, uh, look at those answer choices. The answer choices don't say 1,467 minutes. And you're absolutely right. You have hours and minutes. So this is a little bit of a challenge question because now you have to convert your minutes into hours and minutes. And the way that we'll do that is simply divide by 60. We know that every hour is 60 minutes. So to go from a small unit like minutes to a big unit like hours, we have to see how many times these minutes can fit in terms of 60. So we'll divide by 60 here. So I'm gonna keep that right there. And what I'll do is I'm gonna convert right here. 60 minutes. How many times can one hour fit into 1,467 minutes? The remainder is the remaining number of minutes. Watch this. 60 going into one doesn't work. 60 going into 14 doesn't work. 60 going into 146, that's twice. That's two times. 60 times two is 120. You got yourself 26 left over. Bring yourself that seven, bring that down. 
And now what you have is 60 going into 267. I know that 60 can go into 240 because 6 goes into 24. So 6 goes into 240 four times. So now that I'm there, I'll subtract 240. Hopefully my big old head doesn't get in the way. All right, sweet. So then we have ourselves uh, 27 left over. We have ourselves 27 left over. And so with that, that's your remaining number of minutes. I know it's right there above my big old head, but this is the number of hours and that's the number of minutes right here. So your final answer should be, this turns into 24 hours and 27 minutes. And there we go. That's gonna be the answer, my party people. So if I check that out, boom, 24 hours and 27 minutes, that is answer choice C, and we are good. So at the end of the day, my party people, look, what are you waiting for in terms of getting that score that you want? What's holding you back? A lot of the times, a lot of people say that, hey, you know, I have my study schedule that's not really working out. I have a work schedule. I have a family. I have a daughter. I have a son. Yeah, I get that. I know how inconvenient it might be in terms of trying to accomplish your goals, but also having to take care of yourself. And that's why my program allows you to go ahead and study at your schedule. So there's the link right there. Go ahead and check it out or feel free to shoot me a text because I'd love to go ahead and have a conversation with you about how we can raise your score and work around any schedule that you may have. I've had hundreds and hundreds of students pass this year alone. We've had over a thousand last year. So I would love to make sure that you succeed. Go ahead and reach out to me. I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach, and I wanna see you ace the ASVAB. 567-698-8867. Shoot me a text and say that you saw me on YouTube, and then I'll wish you a great day, and I hope to see you in class soon. Let's ace the ASVAB.